All right, so this topic is probably one of the most important videos that I will ever do regarding your health. I didn't know what to call it, so I titled it, the most important antioxidant is melatonin, not glutathione. But this information is completely brand new. You've never heard this before, and it's very important information. Now, a few weeks ago, I interviewed uh, Dr. Roger Schwelt. It was a fascinating interview related to vitamin D. And there's one point at the end where he talked about uh, some of the studies not really coming out that dramatic with your immune system using vitamin D. And then he said something that really got my attention. He said that it was probably not just vitamin D. He said that if they did the studies with actual sun, not just vitamin D, you would probably see a much better outcome. And then he sent me this, this paper that literally blew me away and I put the link down below. And this video is a summary of that paper. And so people, um, they wanna live as long as possible. Uh, why do people die? Well, the great majority of people die because of heart disease. That's the first cause of why people die. The second cause is cancer. And the third reason why people die is related to some metabolic illness. It could be diabetes, it could be Alzheimer's. It really depends on what country you live in, but typically it's related to some metabolic underlying cause. And what's common about all these reasons why people die is that they're all mitochondrial diseases. In other words, there's some type of dysfunction that destroys the mitochondria. And with cancer, it originates in the mitochondria, the mitochondria become damaged, and then that cell then converts over into a cancer cell. Now with heart disease, we have a lot of free radical damage, whether the person's on a high carb diet or they're a smoker or they have a lot of oxidative stress. And then we create this irritation or inflammation in the inner arteries, but that damage is being created in the mitochondria. And so if we really look at the essence of where the problem is, we're getting this excess of oxidative stress and free radical damage. Normally, our body is supposed to protect against that, okay? And the way that it protects against that is through the antioxidant networks. There's certain enzymes that act as antioxidants one being glutathione. It's, it's considered the most important antioxidant. But guess what? Melatonin is even more powerful and more effective because melatonin is not only an antioxidant, it triggers other antioxidant networks, including glutathione. I mean, melatonin is twice as powerful as vitamin E. And we know the importance of vitamin E to prevent heart disease inside the arteries. So melatonin is a very powerful antioxidant and it triggers other antioxidants. Now, you're probably saying right now, wait a second, I thought melatonin was really about helping you sleep. It's involved in the circadian rhythm. It helps people take it if they get jet lag. And maybe you've heard something about how melatonin is now used to help your immune system since it's now considered an immune modulator to help you regulate your immune system. And of course, I won't mention specifics, but it's very, very powerful against certain viruses. And on top of that, there's a lot of research on how it's an extremely potent anti-cancer compound or a hormone. All right, so maybe you already knew that, but what you don't know is this. There are two forms of melatonin. There's a type of melatonin that is in your blood circulatory system, as well as inside your pineal gland. And your pineal gland makes melatonin stimulated from darkness, okay? But there's also another type of melatonin that is subcellular. That means it's inside your cells. And it's inside the mitochondria. And the reason why it's there is to help protect against the massive oxidation and free radical damage that usually occurs in the mitochondria. So there's two forms of melatonin, circulatory and subcellular. This part right here, the mitochondria that's inside the cells is the great majority of the melatonin in your body. In fact, there's some new data that indicates 
the, the melatonin in your pineal gland is really only a backup or supplemental to this other system. So if you don't have enough in your cells, then it'll actually take from the pineal. Now guess what's going to happen if you don't have enough in the pineal? It's going to affect your sleep. Your quality of sleep is going to be crappy. You're going to get inflammation and you're not going to have the antioxidant protection. And there's a whole list of problems that can occur from that. Not just poor sleep, but chronic inflammation, chronic degenerative diseases, especially of your brain. Do you realize that there's a condition called sundown syndrome, which involves people that have Alzheimer's disease and dementia? So apparently when the sun goes down, 45% of people with Alzheimer's and dementia, they start getting very agitated. They get extremely fatigued. Why do you think that is? Because they're running out of melatonin. They don't have enough melatonin. Now, at this point, you're probably completely confused because typically melatonin is the hormone of darkness, okay? Because everyone knows that the absence of light stimulates melatonin. However, there's some new information. So if you've checked out, check back in because this next part is very, very, very important. The largest stimulus of this intracellular melatonin is near infrared, aka the sun. Certain wavelengths of the sun will stimulate the melatonin inside the cells and darkness will stimulate the melatonin within the circulatory system in the pineal gland. In fact, over 50% of the sun's energy is infrared. And this goes way beyond the benefit of getting vitamin D from the sun. You ever notice why when you sit in front of a campfire, you feel so relaxed and you probably sleep a lot better? Because natural fire gives off infrared. Campfires are very therapeutic. Or why you might feel very relaxed if there's candles around the house. Infrared. When you use incandescent lights, okay, those are the lights that have been around since the 1800s. The type of light that's generated from a heating filament versus LED, which uses a completely different technology. Incandescent lights give off infrared. And unfortunately, the entire industry is moving away from incandescent lights. We have moved into the area of artificial lights, LED, blue lights, AKA your computer, cell phone. In fact, there is a very interesting study, which I'll put a link down below, that demonstrates children in predominantly artificial light end up having a deficiency of gray matter and having a much more difficult time in learning. This is also why there's so many therapeutic benefits to an infrared sauna. And there's a huge trend in people buying infrared lasers, infrared therapies for pain, inflammation, and sleep. So melatonin is not just a hormone of darkness, but it's also a hormone of sunshine. The other cool thing about the sun is that even if you have a hat on, okay, the grass, the clouds, the dirt strongly reflect infrared waves. So you don't have to be looking into the sun. If you're outside, you're going to get infrared indirectly. Now, I just want to tell you a little side note on that topic. Presently, I'm living on a farm. And the two neighbors that helped me a lot on my farm are both in their 60s. Um, their diet is, is not just um, inadequate. Their diets are absolutely terrible, okay? They live on sugar. Uh, one chews tobacco. The other one smokes. Now, both of these guys are outside all day long. Okay. I don't even think they have computers. Or I don't even think they have a cell phone. They're just outside working the land all day long. And they rarely seem to get sick. They don't really have any health problems. They're both super strong, but they eat like crap. But they're getting a tremendous amount of antioxidants that is repairing the oxidative stress, that's repairing the free radical damage. And it's just interesting to know what's important and maybe what's less important. And I really didn't emphasize the importance of the sun for your health. And simply because I didn't have this data right here, this infrared information, as well as its connection 
to increasing melatonin. But apparently, as a therapy, being outside in the environment, in nature, and being exposed to sun is extremely important, probably just as important as eating healthily. Now, the other cool thing about infrared is it has the ability to penetrate your skull. Now, that's mind-blowing. In this research paper, they talk about how it penetrates the cerebral spinal fluid and how that can just bathe the entire brain and spread through the entire spinal cord. It's just, it's wild. So this is just another reason why if someone's getting dementia or has Alzheimer's, they should be exposed to sun. And the cool thing is this, infrared protects against UV radiation. So if you're concerned about the sun causing cancer, I understand that. We're not talking about being out there and getting burned. We're talking about being out there and maybe even getting the sun's indirect energy from the grass. But the point is that this IR helps you generate a tremendous amount of antioxidants that can potentially protect the mitochondria from having its complications from all that free radical damage that occurs. Now, if we flip that and talk about what creates a deficiency of infrared, well, being exposed to artificial lights, LED lighting, blue light, cell phones, computers. So here people are, they're sitting in their home all day in front of the computer, or they're at work sitting at their desk in front of the computer. And by the time they get home, it's already dark out. Well, understanding the importance of melatonin and having enough melatonin to protect against all this other damage. So it's not just about that vitamin D from the sun, it's about melatonin. Now, a couple things you can do in addition to getting outside more and more, you can get one of these therapeutic lights and expose yourself to near infrared 20 minutes a night before you go to bed. That could be something you could do. You can switch out your lighting system to more incandescent lights. You can have more fires in your fireplace or more candles, more campfires. But anyway, I think this is a fascinating topic. And if you haven't seen my video on the therapeutic benefit of the sun, I put it right here, check it out.